always media availability on the novel coronavirus COVID-19. Merci de vous joindre à nous pour cette disponibilité média au sujet du nouveau coronavirus COVID-19. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few items. A reminder to please place your microphone on mute until I invite you to speak or to ask your question. To view who, who is speaking on Zoom, please put your view on speaker view instead of gallery view. The button for this is located in the top right corner of the Zoom video screen. Veuillez changer votre écran en mode speaker en anglais pour pouvoir mieux voir les porte-parole. Le bouton est situé en haut à la droite de la portion vidéo de l'écran. Reporters with accessibility needs can pin the interpreters or follow along on the YouTube stream. Les journalistes ayant des besoins en matière d'accessibilité peuvent avoir recours aux interprètes ou suivre la diffusion en direct sur YouTube. Today, we'll be hearing remarks from Dr. Vera Edges, Chief Medical Officer of Health, Médecin Chef en Santé Publique, and Dr. Brent Malachny, Associate Medical Officer of Health, Médecin Chef adjoint de la Santé Publique. After the remarks from Dr. Etches and Dr. Malachny, we'll then take questions from the media. Please go ahead, Dr. Etches. So as we start our long weekend, I hope all residents can take some time to enjoy the weather and being outdoors. Please remember to stay two meters away from people who do not live in your household. And if you're in public places where that is difficult to maintain that two meter distance, please wear a non-medical cloth mask if possible. As some businesses and public spaces reopen, there are increased opportunities for interacting with each other. And so there's a greater chance of the virus spreading. Our message remains the same. The less people you come into contact with, the better to keep COVID-19 pinned down. La réouverture de certains commerces et espaces publics fournira davantage d'occasions pour interagir avec les autres, uh, ce qui risque d'accroître la propagation du virus. Et notre message de mieux donc en changer, moins les gens entrent en contact les uns avec les autres mieux nous limitons la propagation de la COVID-19. So we are still in a pandemic situation. And I trust that the people of Ottawa will continue to be vigilant to protect themselves and protect others. Although we are seeing some positive signs, uh, such as the number of cases and deaths decreasing and hospitalization rates stabilizing, the virus has not left our community. So we want to prevent a second wave of the virus uh, because if infections increase rapidly, again, our healthcare system could be overwhelmed, more people will die, and businesses will potentially suffer from having to go through a second scaling back of their operations. The daily case numbers continue to show that there is community spread of the virus. So cases that we cannot attribute to direct contact with a confirmed case or travel. For example, we've had 1,753 lab confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Ottawa to date, with about half, 52%, acquired from institutions. But uh, as for the situation in the community, uh, there were about 20% who had known close contacts that were positive, and approximately 20% were community acquired cases where the individual could not identify the source of the virus. So contributing to the situation is that people can be asymptomatic and still spread the virus. With a lot of focus on long-term care homes, I believe some people are starting to think that the virus is only circulating in those homes. This is not the case. We're strongly encouraging everyone who has symptoms that could be COVID-19 to self-isolate and then to present for assessment, uh, for um, evaluation to see if you need to be tested even if the symptoms are mild, so that we can track down the sources of infection in the community and break those chains of transmission. We do not know how long we will have to live with COVID-19 in the community, so we have to find healthy ways to cope with our new reality. Please stay home if you are ill, continue to wash your hands, and disinfecting shared surfaces and wearing a non-medical mask when physical distancing is not possible. Nous ne savons pas pendant combien de temps nous allons devoir vivre avec cette COVID-19. Alors nous devons trouver des façons saines de nous adapter à cette nouvelle réalité. Veuillez continuer à vous laver les mains, à désinfecter les euh, surfaces communes et à porter un masque non médical quand la distanciation physique n'est pas possible. 
So my colleague, Dr. Brent Malachny, will share some more about what we are monitoring and about how we will help Ottawa reopen and what the public can do. Thank you, Dr. Etches. Please go ahead, Dr. Malachny. Great, thank you, Vera. As more businesses and public spaces reopen in Ottawa, all of us have a role to play. Ottawa Public Health, residents, our partners and businesses. Some of the key roles for public health are to monitor the number of confirmed cases, identify and follow up with close contacts, identify sources of infection and control outbreaks in the community. OPH announced on Wednesday that testing is now available to everyone with suspected COVID-19 symptoms. The province also followed with this announcement yesterday for all Ontarians. It is essential for us to identify people with COVID-19 infections and follow up quickly with them to provide information and the importance of self-isolating and to identify their close contacts so that they can also self-isolate in case they've been infected. This management of cases and their contacts is one of the essential public health measures in place to help keep the virus pinned down as we begin to reopen Ottawa. Again, we encourage anyone with symptoms to go for testing. You can now be assessed for testing at both the assessment center and the care clinics, and they have the capacity for this increased testing. Par conséquent, nous encourageons toutes les personnes qui ont des symptômes à se faire dépister. Vous pouvez maintenant vous présenter dans un centre d'évaluation ou une clinique de soins de la COVID-19 pour subir une évaluation visant à déterminer si vous devez subir un dépistage. Ces endroits ont une capacité accrue de dépistage. People have asked us why they should go for testing, especially if their symptoms are mild and they're managing okay at home. By getting tested, you are helping us find every case so, we can so that we can stop the transmission. This information helps us to detect cases more quickly, understand what transmission is occurring in the community, investigate the source, and identify outbreaks earlier. Regarding surveillance testing, healthcare teams in the Champlain Health Region successfully tested residents in all 28 local long-term care homes ahead of the provincial government's May 15th deadline. Over the last three weeks, more than 7,000 residents and 8,000 staff have been tested by teams comprised of hospital staff, public health, and paramedics. Meeting this testing mandate reflects a tremendous effort by our regional partners. We would like to take the opportunity to thank the Brewer Assessment Center staff, the Queensway Carleton Hospital, Hôpital Montfort, and the Ottawa Paramedic Service for their commitment to supporting long-term care in the Champlain region. Now the province has announced the plan to gradually reopen some businesses and public spaces. By slowly reopening, we will be better able to assess and monitor any increases in transmission of the virus within the community and hopefully reduce the impact of any outbreaks. OPH has links to the province's recommended guidelines for businesses and workplaces on our website to help guide reopening in a way that considers the health and safety of both employees and customers. Tous ces changements augmenteront nos interactions avec les autres et donc le risque d'infection. Nous surveillerons donc les répercussions de la réouverture des commerces et de la levée d'autres restrictions liées à la COVID-19. We will be monitoring the impact of the reopening of businesses and other easing of COVID-19 restrictions. As these changes increase our interactions with others, there is an increased risk of infection rates rising. We have to stay vigilant and continue to practice physical distancing and limiting the total number of people that we come in contact with. These are the effective interventions that allowed us to flatten the curve and kept demands on hospital capacity manageable so far. The recommended physical distancing measures don't change with reopening. Thank you to the people of Ottawa for your hard work and efforts to protect our community. I've already spoken about what to do if you're feeling ill. We also want everyone to continue your efforts to lower the chance that you will spread the virus unknowingly to someone else or that someone will give it to you. When you are outside your home, we recommend that you protect yourself and others by maintaining physical distance of two meters or six feet as much as possible, limiting close contact to those within your own household as much as possible, washing your hands regularly and wearing a non-medical, a cloth mask, where physical distancing may not be possible, such as at the grocery store or on public transit. 
Now, wearing a mask is new for many people, but we've already seen this happening in our community. When more people wear a mask, especially as more businesses and public spaces reopen, wearing masks is one element that allows the city to control the spread of transmission, get control of the disease, and have more freedom. We know that some individuals who are infected with COVID-19 are asymptomatic, and wearing a mask limits their ability to infect others. Quand plus de gens portent un masque, en particulier avec la réouverture de certains commerces et espaces publics, la ville est mieux en mesure de limiter la propagation de virus, de contrôler la maladie et d'avoir une plus grande liberté d'action. Vous quand vous portez un masque, vous protégez les autres. Comme le président Egli l'a dit hier à l'Assemblée virtuelle, mon masque vous protège et le vôtre me protège. If you are wearing a mask, you're caring for others. As Chair Egli said at yesterday's town hall, my mask protects you and your mask protects me. There's information on our website about where to get a non-medical mask and how to wear and wash a mask. We also launched a mass contest today on the Link Ottawa, Ottawa Public Health Youth Focused Instagram to encourage youth to embrace proper mask use and come up with fun and quirky names for masks. We also recently connected with residents through an online survey and the results give us increased confidence that the people of Ottawa are committed to continue to follow public health guidance and protect each other. 94% of respondents said they will continue to practice physical distancing even as some restrictions are relaxed and almost 90% of respondents said they would be willing to wear a non-medical mask in public to be allowed to access more services. Lastly, I would like to remind residents that we want to hear your thoughts, perceptions, and understanding of the current restrictions in place related to COVID-19. You can share your feedback through our online platform at engage.ottawa.ca slash COVID-19. Thank you again for your community-wide response to this pandemic. Enjoy the long weekend just two meters apart. Thank you, doctor. Um, now for the media questions. In the interest of time, I will quickly read through the list of media who have registered. No need to indicate if you are present. However, if I missed your outlet, please speak up after I am through the list. Pour gagner du temps, je vais lire la liste des médias qui se sont inscrits. Vous n'avez pas besoin d'indiquer si vous êtes présent, sauf si je n'ai pas nommé votre organisation. 1310 News, Canadian Healthcare Technology, CBC, CTV Ottawa, Global News, Le Droit, Ontario Today, Ottawa Citizen, Ottawa Sun, Radio Canada, Rogers TV, and Your Community Voice. Have I missed an agency? Wonderful. I will now invite each agency in alphabetical order to ask their question. Please remember you have one question and one follow up. Nous allons maintenant répondre aux questions des médias en ordre alphabétique. Chacun pourra poser une question et une question de suivi. We'll now start with Chris Curtis with 1310 News. Hi, yeah, I just want to make sure you guys hear me okay. We do. Go ahead, Chris. Excellent. So I just want to make sure um, for this long weekend, is there any different messaging going out this long weekend than there has been in the past? Is it still stay in your bubble? Has that changed at all? Uh, no, the, the recommendations to continue practicing physical distancing and to limit your activities to the members of your household as much as possible remain. Does that apply to uh, Ontarians going to a potential Quebec cottage as well? My understanding is that in the Outaouais region, uh, the province of Quebec is still uh, asking that people only do essential travel uh, across the border. Um, Thank you. All right, now for um, Norm Talinsky with Canadian Healthcare Technology. Uh, thank you. Uh, my, this is my question. How is uh, uh, on the Ottawa Public Health's uh, new COD system uh, an improvement? Oh, I've seen some positive signs. Hello, can you help? Can you hear me? Hi, Norm. You might have to turn down just the volume on your computer, but yes, you can hear you. So please go ahead. Turn it down. Okay. Just a second. I heard you asking about our new COD system. Yes. Uh, I, I'd like to know how it's an improvement over Ontario's troublesome, outdated IFAS system and how it is contributing to 
your tracking, reporting, and contact tracing responsibilities. Thank you. I'll, I'll start to answer. And uh, Dr. Malachi, if there's anything you want to add, because you're actually using the system, uh, I, I believe I'm I'm not one of the, the many uh, that actually interacts with, with that interface. My understanding is that it is, it's been very well received by our team, uh, that the interface is easy to use, that we are able to grow our case and contact management team uh, with training that is uh, able to be accomplished within a couple of days, uh, given uh, the ease of use of the system. Uh, previously, it was harder uh, to bring people on to train them how to use IFIS. Uh, so we have um, no longer have to use paper uh, to keep track of, of the details of cases until uh, we can get that information into IFAS through data entry staff. Uh, so it's, it's definitely improving um, the efficiency. The, the, the wonderful thing about it is we are able also to make connections uh, between cases more easily by, by looking at connections between variables. And we are um, also uh, able to add in new variables to be able to, to start to track uh, things like ethnicity. Um, so that, that is my understanding. I, I think we would, it's probably worth us writing this up a, a little bit more to, to share uh, the, the, the the tool and the usefulness of the tool with others. Anything you'd like to add? Uh... Yeah, no, thanks, Vera. I think that was a quite a comprehensive answer. I mean, I think that the staff that have begun using it have really talked about how intuitive it is. Um, I also think that uh, it, it'll allow us to, to do more analysis of the data. Uh, to be able to look for interactions and common patterns that that previously was very difficult to do with uh, with uh, with paper records, uh, and as I indicated in my opening remarks, uh, you know this case management piece is going to be very very important going forward in terms of uh, keeping a lid on or keeping this uh, uh, situation pinned down, and I think this will be a, a helpful uh, tool for us to be able to do our work uh, easier and better. Uh, just to follow up. Uh... Uh, was the uh, system developed in-house or contracted out, and how long did it take uh, to develop? Uh, so I might have to follow up with you offline if you would like a lot more detail on this. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, had a team collaborating uh, to make this uh, system available. It came from Newfoundland, uh, where uh, my understanding is the developers um, had used this for outbreak management and they made the, and now you're getting into an area I really don't know much about, they made the code available uh, for us to adapt it uh, and, and grow its capabilities uh, for managing COVID-19. Uh, and so um, it, it did require a bit more development uh, that I believe was done um, in conjunction with the City of Ottawa uh, IT department and, and the original developers. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, Norm. Um, all right, up next we have Natalia Goodwin with CBC. Go ahead, Natalia. Hi there, uh, Dr. Edges. Just um, another follow up question on businesses opening on Tuesday. We've seen some businesses uh, in the city, such as Costco, do a only mask entry, like you can't get in unless you're wearing a mask. Would you recommend that to some businesses uh, that are opening as a way to prevent the spread? Uh, you know, I think the priority for everybody, uh, whether you're a customer or uh, an, an employer or an employee in a workplace that's opening, is to protect each other. Uh, and to, to decrease the risk of transmission of the virus. And so uh, we know that many measures uh, are being taken to change the way workplaces function in terms of increasing physical distancing, um, making sure people can wash their hands and um, all, all of these things are important. So the, the mask uh, is recommended when people cannot keep two meters away from others. So if it's that kind of business, that kind of setting, um, then this is this is a strong recommendation. There, there are uh, uh, there is a lot of guidance for workplaces on our website, uh, occupational health and safety uh, guidance as well from the province. Um, we know it, it, that it's uh, not a hundred percent of people can wear a mask, so uh, we want to acknowledge that that some people have. Uh, 
respiratory disease or uh, you know different disabilities that make it harder to wear a mask. Uh, but we do recommend uh, it, it strongly um, that uh, this is something that if we can uh, accomplish it on a large scale across our community, uh, it's it's going to be very important um, as we inc interact more to have these additional protections against the spread of the virus. Okay, thank you. And just to follow up on that, uh, as we go into this first phase of reopening, what kind of numbers are you going to be looking for in the next couple of weeks that maybe would make you recommend that we claw back? Like what kind of a spike would uh, give your uh, sense to, to claw back? Uh, you know, what we're looking for is a equilibrium or a nice balance between um, the level of infection in our community um, that may go up uh, with more interaction and the hospital capacity and the public health capacity to uh, identify cases, follow up with cases, stop the transmission, and, and to manage any hospitalizations that result. Um, so we are seeing that the hospitals have good capacity uh, right now, um, and we are able as a public health system in Ottawa to follow up with uh, all of the cases uh, over 90% within 24 hours. Um, so we, these are the kinds of measures we'll continue to watch uh, to see um, if thing, things are getting out of balance. Okay, but there's no like specific number, like 300 cases a day or, or something like that that you could point to? It's hard to give a number uh, because um, what, what we're, we're also trying to balance is we know people need to be back at work. We recognize the value of employment and people need income. And so, um, you know, we need to have some space to allow for that. And, and, and we also have seen our healthcare system has had the time now because everyone did their part with physical distancing to prepare uh, to be able to ramp up their capacity. So the 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 upper limit of, of the hospital capacity is, is more flexible now. People have plans to be able to scale up uh, more beds if they're needed. Um, and so I, I think that um, this is going to be a dynamic uh, situation that we follow, that we're in, we're in daily contact with our hospital uh, about uh, the situation and um, you know, we'll continue to inform the public as well. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Natalia. Um, CPB News, Josh Pringle. Uh, thank you and good afternoon. Uh, my question is, I guess for Dr. Etches, we're going into a weekend. Um, some of the restrictions are starting to be eased. You can now go to a store. People are trying to understand, why can I go to a store, but I can't have people over for a barbecue like one other household? Like, can you explain why we still need to continue to have these physical distancing measures in our home, but I can still go to a store or go places where there's other people? Yeah, I appreciate that question. Um, you know, what, what we've heard uh, from the public is that uh, their priorities are to be able to get back out into public spaces like parks um, and to uh, be able to... Um, have have a, a job again to be able to access uh, employment and income, um, as well as have the social connections uh, you know that that are needed also for health. And so we've seen movement uh, on the first uh, that park spaces can now be used uh, by by household members and 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 small groups. The um, the employment uh, is is what's behind opening up businesses, right, and, and getting people back to work, and and so uh, each of these lessening of restrictions increases the interactions between people and the risk of infection, and we're we're going to go slowly so that we can measure that um, impact of those actions, and so I, I think that's why. Um, you know, it's taken some time to move on the social side uh, in terms of uh, the recommendations for households. Uh, they, the, the, the words I've always said are stay home and interact with your household as much as possible, right? So it's, it's not a rule, it's not a law, it's good advice. And, and what is as much as possible varies for different people. Um, some people have to go out to work. Uh, some people have a mental health uh, situation where they need to access other supports to be able to help them. So this is, this is just, um, you know, want people to understand the less you interact with others, the less likely you are to get the virus. 
or, or we are likely to have a, a, a rise in infections across the board in our community. And so we, we know people have done that so far. Uh, they've done a great job uh, at physical distancing and we're asking people to continue to go slowly, to be cautious. Um, uh, we don't wanna end up like New York City. And that's a very, very real possibility. And my follow-up question, we've seen the health unit in Leeds uh, talk about asking people not going to their cottage. Would you recommend that people skip their trip to their cottage this weekend in Ontario and just stay close to home as much as possible this weekend to help limit the spread and reduce your chance of exposure? My advice continues to be to stay home as much as possible. Yes, uh, it's it's so difficult. This is a traditional weekend uh, for people to open up cottages. I appreciate that. And uh, I think we're going to have some beautiful weather at some point. Uh, and and I, I think if we can enjoy that closer to home, uh, it does decrease the risk of, you know, spreading spreading infection across the province. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Um, up next, we have Craig Lord with Global News. Go ahead, Craig. Hi, uh, I believe this will be a question for Dr. Etches. We are about two months into the, uh, the lockdown, the pandemic, since you asked people to start staying home. Uh, but as you mentioned earlier, we are still seeing uh, incidents of community spread. Uh, I'm curious if from your perspective, if you think there's anything that we as a community that Ottawa residents could have done better uh, by this point to potentially have eliminated uh, instances of community spread. Hmm. I, I really don't have, have any complaints uh, about the people of Ottawa. I think uh, the vast majority of people have done their part to stay home and uh, as much as possible. It, it's, it's, um, it's a very ambitious goal to think about eliminating this virus. Uh, I, I think that's not realistic in the short term. I, I hope we can, you know, I, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I, 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 let's strive for that, but, but realistically, um, you know, people need to work. Uh, this uh, this infection is um, giving rise to asymptomatic infections that cause spread. Uh, it's it's going to be very challenging uh, to to eliminate uh, the virus, and so it's it's not through any fault uh, of, of people. Uh, I think most people are doing doing the best they can. Um, it's just it, it. What we need now is to continue that that effort and to monitor and and to go uh, slowly so that we can keep things at a manageable level. Um, you know, it, it may well be that uh, we continue to make progress uh, with an approach of identifying as many cases as we can, and um, and doing that contact tracing. So I guess I would have one ask, uh, a new ask of people in the community. And that is, uh, I think, uh, hopefully was clear in our statements, but I do ask people who have symptoms that could be COVID-19 infection to present for assessment. Um, this, this is something people maybe didn't realize was possible before because the message has been out there that the tests are limited, only healthcare workers, essential workers, that's changed. And so that is my new ask. As we enter into uh, this, this phase of reopening, um, to do your part uh, by helping us identify each of those cases. And, and this is the way you know, we'll work towards that really ambitious goal of elimination. Um, and, and the travel is also important. So uh, as we go forward, uh, one of the continuing challenges uh, to elimination will be people traveling uh, to areas that are more affected and, and bringing back the virus. So again, that staying as close to home as possible uh, will help. Great, and uh, just a quick follow up actually on the travel question. Um, I'm not sure if this is an OPH uh, actual uh, decision to make, but when someone travels say out of the out of the province or out of the country and then comes back and they're, they're asked to self isolate for those 14 days, if they get a test done, can the and they comes back negative do they still have to do that that self-isolation or what is the kind of uh gray area there yes there's a lot of uh talk about testing and and how it can help or not help um uh, so unfortunately uh, a test at one point in time does not rule out that somebody is infected 
and just in the early stages of infection or incubating uh, the virus. And so um, when someone returns uh, from a country more uh, affected, uh, the quarantine does stay in place for 14 days, uh, even if they've been tested and it's come back negative. Uh, we wanna wait that full incubation period. Uh, we're also seeing some employers now, you can imagine, I, I, I totally get it. Uh, they wanna have their employees tested before their employees come back to work. It, it seems like a, a, you know, a, an extra layer of security that their employees aren't uh, going to be infected or pass the infection on. Um, same challenge there. There, there is no guarantee uh, that that test on Saturday means that they're okay on Tuesday. Uh, and so we, we don't uh, want uh, employers to be uh, trying to get their, their asymptomatic well employees tested before they go back to work. Um, we need to reserve our testing capacity uh, for those who have symptoms uh, and for handling outbreaks. Great, thanks so much. Thank you. Maintenant, nous irons à le droit Julien Paquet. À vous. Merci. Euh, oui, je, je, je constate que vous insistez beaucoup sur la, les, les nouveaux paramètres euh, au niveau euh, pour, pour, en fait, pour accueillir les gens qui vont, être, qui vont pouvoir être testés. Euh, Est-ce que, est que vous avez l'impression que le, ce message-là, que, que tous les gens, tous les résidents d'Ottawa qui sont maintenant, qui, qui ont des symptômes, peuvent être testés, avez-vous euh, l'impression que ce message-là n'a pas encore été entendu? Oui, je pense que c'est important de répéter le message que euh, le dépistage pour COVID-19 est disponible pour tout le monde qui a un symptôme euh, qui est peut-être infection avec euh, COVID-19 parce que le message auparavant était qu'il n'y a pas beaucoup de dépistage et c'est pour les, les travailleurs en santé. Euh, et ça prend le temps euh, de changer euh, les idées euh, dans la population, euh, répétition. Euh, J'apprécie votre part euh, pour euh, concentrer sur ce message. C'est aussi euh, un défi parce que pour la majorité des gens, heureusement, la maladie n'est pas trop euh, sévère. Et euh, avec euh, un euh, symptôme qui est peut-être juste un mal à la tête ou euh, peut-être fatigue, c'est pas commun pour, pour les gens d'aller euh, faire une évaluation. Alors, ça, c'est différent euh, aussi. Euh, et maintenant, c'est une priorité d'identifier les cas. Et euh, alors, je, je voudrais voir que tout le monde euh, qui a des symptômes euh, vient euh, aller faire une, une évaluation. Parfait, merci. Euh, et puis, l'autre question que, que je voulais vous poser, c'est, je ne sais pas si ça fait partie des choses que vous entendez quand vous consultez la, la population, mais est-ce que vous craignez qu'avec les, 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 les mesures restrictives qui sont, qui sont assouplies et le fait que ça fait, bien, ça fait à peu près deux mois que, que tout le monde est confiné, que les gens commencent à, à, à se laisser aller un peu, à, à prendre les, les mesures un petit peu moins au sérieux et tourner des coins ronds. Hein. OK, je comprends que la question, c'est euh, concernant les, les mesures euh, et leur efficacité pendant ces deux mois. Et si on peut tourner... En fait, Est-ce est que vous craignez que, que, que les gens commencent à en avoir assez d'être de, 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 seuls à la maison? Et il commence à, 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 à tourner un peu les coins ronds, à dire, bon, ben si j'invite un ami chez moi, c'est pas plus grave que ça, c'est juste, une, on est juste deux ou trois, euh, même si c'est pas des gens qui habitent dans la même résidence au départ. OK, je m'excuse, mais en français, c'est pas parfait. Euh, je comprends que vous voulez savoir si c'est possible de tourner au... Euh, uh, I'll ask it in English okay. if, it, if it's easier. Okay. Uh, my question is, uh, do you worry that people start to, uh, to ease off on, on, on some of the uh, restrictions, maybe start to say, well, I'll, I'll invite one friend over. Uh, and even if it's not a member of my household, you know, it's just one person. We're not a group of 
2025 is just, so yeah. you worry that that people get sick of being home alone and start to uh to to ease off on the on the on the restrictions um pour moi je comprends que c'est difficile uh, cet avis de de garder les relations avec juste les gens qui habitent avec vous. Uh, et oui, je comprends, ça, ça devient plus difficile avec la quantité de temps qui est passé. Um, C'est uh, important maintenant, pendant cette période, de commencer avec la relation de restrictions uh, pour les travailleurs, uh, de uh, prendre le temps de... Uh, uh, um, déterminer quels sont les impacts euh, sur le niveau d'infection dans notre communauté. Alors, on va à euh, euh, un plan d'aller lentement euh, pour euh, évaluer euh, l'impact. Et je comprends euh, aussi la population veut avoir plus de liberté concernant les, les visiteurs. Euh, si c'est une question de santé mentale, euh, quelqu'un a besoin de, de soutien, absolument, c'est important de, de faire les liens avec euh, les autres. Mais euh, si c'est une question de, de relations sociales, euh, j'encourage les gens de faire euh, une visite avec la distanciation physique. Euh, c'est... Le cas que maintenant, le virus est encore dans notre communauté et chaque euh, interaction peut augmenter le risque pour les visiteurs et pour, pour euh, la maison, les personnes dans la maison. Parfait, merci Julien. Um, now we have Amanda Pfeffer with Ontario today. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can. Oh, good. Okay, fantastic. So I'm thinking about the people who, um, as we open up the province, the people who uh, have to wait a little bit longer, people with underlying conditions, uh, and I think it's seniors over 70, if I, if I have that right. So what is your advice then uh, to seniors and people with underlying conditions in terms of You know, as the province opens, what is your advisement? Are they stuck inside until in, an, in a kind of self-isolation until there's a vaccine or a cure? What is your advisement to them? Um, my advice is that uh, we want to make sure that they're protected uh, from virus that's still circulating in our community. Uh, and so to continue to look for ways to have uh, supports uh, delivered to the home to continue to look for virtual methods uh, for connecting with family and friends and um, you know to to stay uh, on on top of the emerging information uh, that we will uh, be continuing to share uh, information about uh, the level of infection in our community um, we're hoping that that will continue to trend down and and that will will reach um, a level that that makes it uh, uh, safer um, for for everyone, uh, especially people over 70. Um, unfortunately, that is the age group where we see higher rates of uh, mortality. And so, is that advisement then? Um, is that advisement then uh, look like it could be many many months uh, longer? Is the is the true? Um, are they really released from this kind of self isolation only when um, that certainty comes with, um, um, you know, a, um, a vaccine? And I, I'm just wondering also yeah, the, pub I, the I, public I, health challenge there. The public yeah. health challenge you're thinking about for these people with underlying conditions. How are you going to monitor this group? So a couple of things. Uh, one is that the modeling uh, that we follow that gives us an idea of the path into the future shows that if we continue this level of physical distancing that we're doing now, the level of infection in our community will keep dropping. Uh, in, in fact, you know, by the end of May, uh, if we continue this level of physical distancing, we'll be very encouraged by very much lower levels of infection in our community. So this is good news. It doesn't mean months and months and months with a higher level of infection. H however, we're, we're, we're just trying to calibrate where we're trying to balance against the increased um, 
risk of, of growing levels of infection uh, as we interact with people more. It's why we all need to do our part so that people who are more uh, at risk of a negative outcome, you know, will have the opportunity to get out and about again sooner rather than later. Um, the other piece is of how, how we're checking in on people who are over 70, who are more socially isolated, uh, is through the Human Needs Task Force. So again, Volunteer Ottawa uh, has been helping, um, the United Way, the Ottawa Community Foundation, all of these groups have been um, uh, finding ways to reach those who have less advantage or more challenge in our community. And uh, that includes wellness visits by the Red Cross. Uh, you know, people are going to homes and, and checking on people. And, and this will continue. Great. Thank you, Amanda. Um, on to Joanne Moshes with the Ottawa Citizen. Go ahead, Joanne. Um, hi, this is Aiden Helmer with the Ottawa Citizen. I'm going to ask that question on behalf of Joanna, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. I see uh, her microphone's not working, so please go ahead. Okay. Um, so we're just asking, uh, with many of um, uh, a lot of the uh, playing fields and parks uh, being opened uh, to people uh, on, a, again, a gradual basis, um, there's going to be a lot of temptation, I think, to, for a lot of people to sort of gather, perhaps in groups, perhaps larger than five people. I'm just wondering how the city is going to be policing that uh, level that bylaw might be involved and whether uh, there's going to be... Um, a zero tolerance like there was back in the early days when uh, people were being ticketed for um, remaining in parks for too long. Just wondering how that's going to be uh, policed. Thank you. Getting into uh, territory here that uh, is really more the city of Ottawa territory, but we work together. And I can tell you that the um, City of Ottawa's focus is to use the park ambassadors, uh, the new role that's been created, uh, to help people understand uh, what the current environment is. Uh, so yes, uh, people can use the green space, they can now go onto the ball fields, they can go onto the soccer fields with members of their household, or in groups of five or less. Uh, and there's to be no organized sports activities, uh, you know, things like that. So the park ambassador's uh, role is to educate and, and to help people understand um, and to share the rationale, uh, you know, I, I think which, which I can emphasize uh, from a public health point of view is that um, we're not through this pandemic. Uh, we have uh, things that are gonna increase the risk of transmission and we need to keep doing our part to counteract that uh, by staying two meters away from others who aren't in our household. Thank you. And Aiden, you were actually next on the list. Do you have uh, a question? We're just going to combine those two. We'll, we'll just combine the citizen and son together today, I believe. Perfect. Thanks. Do you have a follow-up? Uh, have a great long weekend. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Um, so up next, we have uh, maintenant nous irons Dominique Degré avec Radio-Canada. Dominique, à vous. Oui, bonjour. Euh, ma première question, ce serait en, en deux volets, si possible. D'abord, peut-être me répéter en français euh, ce qui a été fait pour tester dans les euh, maisons de soins de longue durée. Donc, vous avez réussi à atteindre vos objectifs de dépister tout le monde, euh, d'un côté. Mais aussi, en suivi à ça, quand est-ce qu'on va savoir combien de ces 7000, je pense, résidents-là ont la maladie ou pas, est-ce que c'est déjà comptabilisé dans les bulletins quotidiens ou est-ce que ça va euh, suivre dans les prochains jours? Je m'excuse juste un moment. J'ai cherché pour les numéros pour euh, votre première question et je pense que je manque le deuxième. Ah, euh... Premièrement, je peux juste euh, répondre euh, absolument. Euh, avec nos partenaires, nous avons accompli euh, l'exercice le, de surveillance dans le foyer de soins de longue durée. Euh, pas aujourd'hui, euh, avant aujourd'hui, euh, le nombre des résidents euh, euh, qui, qui a eu un dépistage, c'était euh, 7000. Euh, et pour les employés, c'était 8000. C'est plus que les deux, mais c'est les, les numéros. Et euh, c'était euh, avec les hôpitaux, euh, la paramedics euh, et euh, la santé publique Ottawa et, et avec euh, le soutien de, de le foyer de, de soins de longue durée. Le deuxième, et le, le, le deuxième volet de cette question-là, c'est de savoir 
on a fait passer les tests à ces 7000 résidents-là, à ces 8000 employés-là. Quand est-ce qu'on va savoir dans ce bassin-là qui est positif, combien de personnes sont positives ou négatives à, à la COVID-19? OK, bon, euh, je n'ai pas tous les résultats euh, maintenant. Euh, euh, on a besoin de euh, continuer euh, euh, avec les études euh, des résultats. Et euh, pour la plupart, euh, nous avons trouvé dans les maisons où il y a déjà une grande éclosion avec un grand nombre de cas, nous avons trouvé d'autres cas. Euh, mais pour la majorité des maisons où la situation est stable, il n'y a pas une éclosion, euh, nous n'avons pas trouvé des cas. Ça, c'est le, le grand euh, but. Mais j'imagine, euh, Dr. Milachny, tu n'as pas aussi des de détails à ce moment. On va continuer de... Euh, évaluer les résultats pendant la fin de semaine. D'accord. Et euh, peut-être mon, mon follow-up, euh, c'est sur les masques, en fait. Euh, et au Québec, la santé publique, sa, sa position, c'est de recommander fortement le port du masque en public, surtout quand la distanciation n'est pas possible. Vous avez dit que vous recommandez fortement aussi les masques. Euh, Aujourd'hui, au Québec, il y a beaucoup de questions de le rendre peut-être obligatoire dans les transports en commun, dans les grandes villes. Euh, vous, pour ce qui est d'Ottawa, est-ce que c'est quelque chose que vous observez aussi ou quelque chose qui serait nécessaire, c'est-à-dire d'obliger le masque dans des espaces plus petits, des espaces publics plus petits comme le transport en commun? Et le, le recommandation forte pour l'utilisation des masques est parce que ça peut donner protection aux autres euh, quand c'est impossible de garder une distance de deux mètres entre eux. Euh, et c'est vraiment difficile, bien sûr, sur les autobus ou un train. Alors, c'est une conversation euh, avec beaucoup de différentes villes euh, euh, pour euh, examiner la le, le question d'une de, de uh, recommandation que c'est euh, obligatoire sur le transport en commun. Uh, vous pouvez imaginer, il y a certaines um, uh, dimensions importantes. Si quelque chose est obligatoire, c'est important que uh, les passagers aient uh, accès uh, au masque. Uh, c'est aussi important que uh, la population comprenne comment on, on utilise un masque uh, dans une, une méthode uh, sécuritaire. Uh, alors, um, je voudrais recommander notre site web uh, santé publique Ottawa. CA par oblique coronavirus euh, parce qu'il y a information là concernant euh, des sources des masques, comment on peut faire un masque, euh, comment on peut laver euh, et réussir euh, un masque. Euh, alors, j'imagine que euh, la conversation va continuer concernant euh, euh, la recommandation pour le transport en commun. Maintenant, c'est mon avis euh, que c'est une bonne idée. Merci. Parfait, merci Dominique. Up next, we have Patrick Guccione with your community voice. Go ahead, Patrick. Uh, Dr. Riches, um, the, the province was uh, reluctant to let any one uh, district or region sort of open up for others. Um, going the other way, if there was, say, a spike in Ottawa, um, would, would that be your decision to sort of slam the door again or would the, the province? Have to step in. I, I just wondered how that would how that would work. Don't like the sound of that door slamming. Well, I mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> sort of put the restrictions back in place, like close the parks and, and yeah, and, and, yeah. And, um, you know, uh, the first thing to to do, which we're doing, is to monitor the situation closely, uh, so that uh, we would detect any rise in the level of infection in our community uh, very rapidly. Um, the, the, the second thing is to make sure we have all the tools uh, in place and that we're using them uh, to uh, stop the transmission when we identify cases and, and keep the level of infection under control. Uh, you know, any decision, uh, if it looks like we're, we're not able to keep infection levels to a manageable level, 
it'll be a conversation with the province with, you know, they'll be noticing that we'll be telling them we'll be talking together. We'll be working with our healthcare partners. We'll be talking to the community uh, because everything uh, that's, that's making a difference right now is community action. And, and we want the population to continue to be informed and understand what their contribution is. It, it's really each of our responsibility to keep the level manageable through keeping two meters away from others as much as possible or using a mask if we can't. Um, so I, I don't think there'll be a sudden, you know, action that, that I'll have to take. I, I think this will be an informed conversation, multiple people, including the public. And um, it, it could be, I think, to get at, at the, the core of your question, perhaps, uh, it could be that Ottawa is different uh, from the surrounding area. We've already seen that uh, some places that are more rural have fewer cases. Um, there are there's just more risk when you live in an urban center, uh, and so it could be that we have to take a different action in Ottawa compared to somewhere else. Um, but uh, again, that would be something that uh, you know I think we'll have some some time for dialogue. Thank you. And I was wondering if you could clarify something um, from the virtual town hall. I think you were saying that. I mean, there's a lot of attention about the infection rate and people over 70 or, or seniors, but we shouldn't assume that young people aren't getting it. They, maybe we're not just seeing the symptoms. Uh, I know you put those numbers out every day, but I wonder if you could um, clarify that for me, that we shouldn't assume because we don't see a lot of young children um, get, you know, showing symptoms that it's not there. That is correct. Uh, I, I would be very surprised uh, if if children are somehow uh, you know not infected. Uh, the evidence is pointing to the contrary. Uh, when you look at studies that have been done of populations uh, in other parts of the world, children are infected. They're uh, infected at probably the same rate as their parents, right? The mid middle-aged population. Uh, however, they don't seem to get the severe illness. And so in our community, uh, we are testing people who are, uh, you know, under age 15. They're, they're coming forward for testing. Um, but the hospitalizations ha have been uh, very, very limited, um, and the severity of the illness, and even that the, the proportion coming forward, it, it's the lowest for that age group uh, under 15. And so um, we don't see it, uh, we're not detecting it, uh, but it's probably there. And that's something, you know, that, that we're keeping in mind uh, when we think about the way forward, right? The, whether um, schools or daycares or camps are going to be open. Uh, we won't assume that the infection spares children. Uh, we'll, we'll assume that we need to uh, take all the precautions of uh, screening for illness, making sure we're checking if, if people have uh, symptoms uh, and making sure we're practicing physical distancing in new ways, uh, you know, reducing sizes of groups uh, if we're going to have children get together. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. That is all the time we have. C'est tout le temps dont nous disposons aujourd'hui. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a great long weekend. Merci à nous rejoindre. Au revoir. Merci.